Secret Weapons of the Third Reich is a 1 to 4 player game that simulates the arms race in World War II from the German perspective. Each player in the game represents a group of German research teams tasked with producing wonder weapons that will allow Germany to avoid defeat. The game starts in 1938 and ends in 1945, and each turn represents one year of real time. This game is semi-cooperative, that is, players must help one another to ensure that a minimum number of wonder weapons are produced for Germany, while at the same time pursuing their personal goals of scoring the most victory points in order to win the game. However, if the players fail to collectively produce a minimum number of weapons, they all lose. The game includes one 18-inch by 18-inch mounted map board, 80 small resource cubes, that is 20 per player color, 40 scientist cylinders, 10 in each of the player colors, 8 large player cubes which are used to mark victory points and the order of play, 2 large black cubes one which is used to mark the game turn, and the other Himmler's favorite project type. Ten small white weapons cubes. Each cube represents a weapon successfully produced by a project and earns the owner a number of victory points. One large white weapons production cube that is used to keep track of the minimum number of weapons that have to be produced collectively by all players to avoid them all losing the game. Four tan-colored common benefit chips, six blue allied control chips, and six Soviet control chips. These are used to mark the advance of the Allies and Soviets into Germany. One black German control chip. 24 project plant chips with numbered stickers, six in each of the player colors, an 18-page full-color rules booklet, four player aid cards, and 68 cards. Of these, 14 are project cards. The front side of a project card is the project in its proposed state. It contains the name, type, and weapon color of the project, the name and loyalty value of the project's lead researcher, plus the number of resource cubes that the researcher provides. And finally, the front shows the requirements for the project to be approved. The back side of the card is the project in its approved state. It shows the project's effects, any funding that the project receives, and the development stage completion costs and requirements. 18 cards are technology cards. The front side shows the technology name, the type, and weapon color. It also states the cost in resource cubes to move the technology to another area. And also it shows the costs and requirements to improve the technology. The back side is the improved technology side. There are 36 event cards showing the event name and any conditions printed in red, the event effects and some of the events contain a bombardment symbol. Finally, the game includes one six-sided die. There are various types of cards in this game, project cards, technology cards, and event cards. And the game uses a color coding system to classify weapons and project types. Many of the project types in this game produce weapons, and weapons can be a source of victory points for the players. The capability of producing a weapon is denoted by a white cube on the project card's approved side. Let's take a look at weapon and project types. 
Projects with a green border produce disruptor weapons, such as ray guns or the atomic bomb. A purple border denotes projects that produce rocket weapons, while a light blue border denotes projects that produce airships, such as flying saucers and airplanes. Now, there are some project types that do not produce weapons. A dark blue border is used to denote U-boat projects such as the Electroboot and cargo U-boats. U-boat projects can only be developed at U-boat bases. Brown borders indicate a mission project. Mission projects such as Expedition to Tibet do not produce weapons and therefore do not use project plans. As to technology cards, these provide one or more technologies to a project to allow the project to develop to completion. There are 12 technology types represented in the game. Some projects require few technologies to be completed. Turning our attention to the Electroboot project, once it has been approved, this project requires three resource cubes and one electric generator technology for it to be completed. Note the crossed out white cube symbol. This means that the project does not produce a weapon. Thus, the fewer the technologies needed to fulfill a project's requirements, the easier it is to be completed. And in the case of the Electro Boot, the player earns two victory points upon completion of the project. Some projects provide alternate combinations of technologies. For example, the Vril Flying Saucer project, if completed, will score victory points for its owner, in this case, four victory points. To be completed, the player must obtain gravitational generator technology, either one improved generator technology or two non-improved gravitational generator technologies as denoted by the 2x notation. In Secret Weapons of the Third Reich, each player controls a group of researchers working on a secret weapons project. Each researcher group has a leading researcher that provides the player with an initial bonus in resource cubes and or scientist cylinders when the project is assigned. The researcher has a loyalty value, which is used to conduct and resist requisition attempts. These are attempts to steal projects and technologies and tokens from other players. A player tries to get his projects to the approved and completed stages. There are certain requirements in terms of resource cubes and scientist cylinders as well as technologies that must be met and also costs in terms of resource cubes and scientist cylinders that are paid to reach the stage of development of a project. Each turn, approved projects generate funding expressed as additional resource cubes. Completed projects award victory points and, in many cases, weapon production. Produced weapons award victory points to the owning player and help achieve the cooperative goal for all players. If the players as a whole fail to achieve a certain minimum number of weapons produced by the end of the game, all players lose. The game starts in 1938. At this time, players can only place project plants in areas in Germany or Austria. As a result of the German conquests in 1939 and afterwards, players can also place plants in other areas of occupied Europe. The map is composed of several circular areas. These areas are connected to each other by thick black lines, which represent lines of communication that allow movement of project plants, resources, and technologies. There are various area types. Telemark, for instance, is a research site in occupied Europe, indicated by the green background. 
which can be used by players starting in 1940. Breslau is a factory site in Germany, as indicated by the dark grey background, which is conquered by the Soviets in 1945. Kiel is a U-boat base in Germany. Wevelsberg and Berlin are special areas, denoted by the red color. Project plants cannot be placed in these areas. Each area where a project plant may be sited displays this symbol. The number on the left is the bunker value of the area, which is used during bombardments. The number on the right is the stacking limit, that is the maximum number of project plants that can be located in the area. The map also shows three circular sectors that represent the range of enemy bombardments in 1940, 41 to 42, and 43 to 45. The map also contains the following tracks. The Victory Point track, the Order of Play track, and the Gain Turn track. And this track indicates when enemy bombardments and advances begin and when to add cards to the event deck, as well as the optional turncoat card. The weapons production goal table indicates the minimum number of weapons that players must produce collectively in a two-player, three-player, or four-player game in order to avoid collective defeat. The common benefit chips are placed in the common benefits box when required by completed projects events. The board shows a large brown strip that players use to plan their actions, that is requisition, research slash recruit, move, play event, production, and development. The requisition action space also contains the requisition table and Himmler's favorite track. Some areas allow research and development, while other areas allow weapons production. And there are areas that only allow research and development of U-boat projects. In this game, players operate in a state of warfare. That is, as time passes by, players are subject to enemy bombardments, which cause the loss of resources and technologies. Also, starting in 1943, Allied and Soviet advances on Berlin make the map smaller and smaller, creating logistical issues. If a produced weapon falls into Allied hands as a result of an Allied or Soviet advance, the player that produced the weapon loses its victory points, and also the weapon's production goal for all players decreases as well. Thus, to avoid collective defeat, players must cooperate with each other to a certain degree while pursuing their personal interests. We begin by taking one of these black cubes and we place it in the 1938 space of the game turn track. And we take the remaining black cube and we place it in the start space of the Himmler's favor track in the requisition table. We take uh, one cube for each player of these medium-sized player cubes we place them in the zero space of the victory point track to keep track of victory points. And then the large white cube, we also place it here. What's the white cube for? You see here on the victory point track, when you're playing with four players, all players collectively must produce at the end of the game at least eight weapons. Otherwise, all players lose the game. If you're playing with three players, it's seven. And if you're playing with two players, it's six. And that's what we use this white cube for, to keep track of the weapons that are being produced throughout the game collectively by all players. We take the remaining medium-sized cubes, one for each player in the game, place them in an opaque cup, and we pick one by one to determine the order of play for the first turn, green, followed by orange, followed by yellow, and fourth will be purple. Now we take the project cards and we shuffle them to form a deck and 
we place the deck nearby and now players will select cards in player order so the green player goes first and selects a card and the player can select the top card or if not the bottom card and uh, if he selects the bottom card he can change it uh, and place it on the top and select the next bottom card if he doesn't like it but he can only do that once per setup and here we will conduct two rounds of selecting cards in order of play because in a four player game each player starts with two projects green goes first and green can select the topmost card expedition to tibet or he can select the card at the bottom of the deck and if he goes for the bottom card he can then not switch and select the card at the top now let's take a look at expedition to tibet this is what is called a mission card it does not produce a weapon it uh, does not use a project plant and that's important because players are limited in the number of project plants they can have on the map at the same time its uh, maximum number is three project plants so it does not use a project plant does not produce a weapon and its approval requirements are very easy just one resource cube and after it is approved you can see that for completion it's two resource cubes and one scientist cylinder and it's completed and it uh, gives the player one victory point and what's important here is that this is the type of project that can be completed in the first turn of the game so it would be a quick one victory point here and the project being a mission project can be used by other players as a requirement that they completed for their projects it's called a common benefit project so for all of these reasons being this a cooperative game green will select expedition to tibet so green gets a bonus of one resource cube because that's what the researcher in expedition to tibet provides and we place the cube on top of the project card next to pick a card is orange orange could pick the topmost card the death ray but this is one of the more ambitious projects you can see that just the approval requirements are pretty tough you have to have uh, an electric generator technology plus any transformer technology they don't have to be specific to any weapon but you have to have both to get it approved and then to complete the project you need the improved versions of the accelerator electric generator and transformer plus three scientists and three resources so this is the type of project that could give you a good uh, number of points like six victory points but it is really really hard to uh, to get uh, completed so orange will opt to uh, draw the card at the bottom of the deck and it is the Horton 229 flying wing and you can see that the approval requirements are not hard just the uh, gas propeller technology and once that is achieved you would need the uh, advanced or improved fuselage and improve an improved gasoline propeller technology as well as two scientists and two resources and that is uh, that is reasonably uh, attainable so orange will keep the Horton 229 flying wing project orange keeps his card and gets the bonus that it provides which is one research cube now it's yellow's turn to pick a card yellow will stay away from the death ray for the same reasons orange did so yellow will pick the card at the bottom of the deck the v1 flying bombs project this project uh, to get it approved you need the gasoline propeller technology which is not hard to get and once it is approved it can score two victory points if uh, yellow also obtains one of the following the gyroscope or the control system technology and of course uh, uh, spend two resources and a scientist so this is a pretty reasonably accessible project and it scores two victory points so yellow now must decide whether he will keep it or exercise his one time only option of declining the card putting it on top of the deck and selecting blindly from the bottom and he would have to keep whatever's in the bottom of the deck so yellow will select the v1 flying bombs 
Yellow keeps the project and it provides an initial bonus of one scientist cylinder. Now it's Purple's turn to pick a card and Purple will also stay away from the death ray so Purple selects a card from the bottom of the deck and it is the Haunabu Flying Saucer Project. Its approval requirement is just the gasoline propeller technology which is the same approval requirement as the V1 project that we saw before. And once approved it has two levels of development Level 1, 3 victory points. Level 2, 6 victory points. But that level 2 has a lot of requirements, many of them improved technologies. Le level 1 is reasonably attainable. In addition to the gasoline propeller, you need the gyroscope, the control system, and you pay two resources and a scientist. So this is a reasonably attainable project at level 1, and it has a, an added bonus. The researcher, once the project is approved, his loyalty increases from two to three, meaning that you can use him to steal away other projects because most researchers in the game have a loyalty of two. And uh, him having the highest loyalty, it's going to be very hard for any other player to steal this project from you. So Purple will keep the Haunabu project. And the card provides an initial bonus of one scientist. So now we select the second project for each of the players and continuing in player order we're back to the top with green. Green will not select the death ray and will select the project at the bottom and it's the orbital solar gun, one of the most uh, difficult projects to complete and let's take a look at the other side. Uh, five research cubes, two scientists, and you have to have satellite technology and complete either a level 2 rocket or level 2 flying saucer project. This is really a uh, shot in the dark. So uh, Green will uh, exercise its right not to accept this card, which can only be done once per setup. And now Green will have to take the card at the bottom and stay with that card. And, uh-oh, it's the German nuclear plan, the other plan that is... Uh, or other project that is very difficult to complete and uh, you can see there why but if you do complete it you win the game. So Green has two projects one of the easiest to complete and one of the most difficult and the German nuclear plan provides an initial bonus of one scientist cylinder. So now it's Orange's turn to pick a card and Orange will not pick the orbital solar gun. So the bottom card is selected. This is the Vril project, the flying saucer project. It doesn't provide any initial uh, resources, but upon completion, it's four victory points and a weapon. So Orange will keep it and uh, note that it requires for approval a mission and already Green has a mission as one of its uh, projects and missions upon completion can be claimed by all other players uh, as requirements completed in the development of their own projects. So now it's Yellow's turn. Yellow will not select the orbital solar gun. So the bottom card is revealed. Cargo U-boats. This is a U-boat project and it is one of those projects that is a common benefit. Upon completion, other players can claim it as a requirement completed for their own project. So Yellow, thinking in terms of being a team player, will accept this card. And the project provides an initial bonus of one per cube, which we place on the card. Now Purple selects his second project, and it will not be the Orbital Solar Gun. So Purple takes the card from the bottom of the deck, and it's the Neuschwabenland mission project. It has an approval requirement of two resource cubes, which is not bad. And it has two levels of development. Level 1, 1 victory point. Level 2, 2. Notice the difference between the requirements of both. Level 1 is fairly easy to achieve, especially the way this game is going. The two resource cubes needed for approval can be used to pay for achieving that level. And you saw that Yellow took the Cargo U-Boats project 
That is a U-boat project, and U-boat projects are common benefits. Once they are completed by one player, its completion can be used by all other players to comply with a requirement of a U-boat project completed. So this could be a quick one point for the uh, purple player once yellow gets his U-boat uh, project completed. So purple will keep the No Schwabenland mission project. And purple receives one resource cube as a bonus and we place it on the card. Now we take the remaining project cards and we combine them with the technology cards and we shuffle the cards to form what will be called the technology deck. And we place the deck of cards on the board on its designated space. Now we will fill the technology track, which are the five empty spaces that you see below the technology deck, and we fill them from bottom to top. We fill the bottom space first, always with the card at the top of the deck. If any cards that have the theory technology appear, we interrupt this sequence to apply the effect stated on the card. So we take the topmost card, long range batteries, and we place it in the bottom space of the technology track. Next, we pick the top card, and this is the Electroboot project. We place it in the next to bottom space on the technology track, the Cascade Accelerator. In the third space from top to bottom, we have two to go. And next is the Space Mirror, and the Space Mirror has the theory technology so we apply the effect of uh, what is stated beside the technology symbol when moved to the technology track if the orbital solar gun is not owned by any player examine the deck and place it on top of this card then reshuffle and refill the track otherwise give this card to the player controlling that project well nobody has the orbital solar gun if you remember it was rejected initially so we place this card here in the corresponding space and now we look for the orbital solar gun among the cards here in the technology deck and here it is and we place it on top of the space mirror so now this is a two and one shot whoever uh, gets the cards from that space gets two cards and we have to reshuffle the technology deck once again and replace the deck on the map on its corresponding space. We still have to fill out the topmost space on the technology track, so we place the top card on the technology deck there and it's nuclear fission and this card has a theory technology and it has an effect that we have to take care of right now. The card states that when it is moved to the technology track, like we did right now, and the German nuclear plant is not owned by any player, we would take uh, the German nuclear plant out of the technology deck and place it on top of this card like we did with the orbital solar gun. But in this case, the green player owns the German nuclear plant, so the card is given to the green player. And the green player assigns this technology card to the German nuclear plant. Note that uh, this technology card has a steep requirement to improve. Five cubes and the accelerator technology. But once it is improved, it provides the green player with the nuclear reactor technology, which is a requirement to fabricate the atomic bomb and win the game if he uh, completes that project. Now we fill the topmost space of the technology track with the beam transformer technology and we have completed this part of the setup and the technology track has five cards with the exception of course of the second space from top to bottom which has the orbital solar gun and also the space mirror in the same space. The next step in the setup is for each player to receive three resource cubes and one scientist cylinder and allocate these tokens to their current projects and all the tokens 
on a given project are known in this game as the project pool. And we start with the green player. So green takes three resource cubes and assign to cylinder from his token reserve and he has to assign them to his projects. Notice that Expedition to Tibet has one resource cube and that is all that it is needed for its approval during the development phase. But this is the kind of uh, project that is not difficult to complete in its entirety and for that it requires an additional resource cube and one scientist cylinder. So what Green will do is to allocate that additional resource cube and its scientist to that project and the other two resource cubes to the more long-term German nuclear plant. Now Orange allocates three resource cubes and a scientist cylinder from his token reserve to his projects. And Orange will place the scientist cylinder and one of its resource cubes on the Horton flying wing and the other two resource cubes on the Vril project. Notice that the Vril project for approval only requires the completion of a mission. And mission projects in this game can be shared by all the players as uh, requirements to their projects. Note that Green is already well into completing the expedition to Tibet mission. And once Green does, we would place this uh, chip on the common benefits space on the board. That means that all players benefit from uh, the completion of that mission. And therefore, for example, Orange can claim then that it has complied with the approval requirements for the Vril project. And then we would flip the Vril card to its approved side. So now we place three resource cubes and a scientist cylinder on Yellow's projects. Yellow has uh, the Cargo U-Boats project and the Vif-1 Flying Bombs. The Cargo U-Boats project is one of those that is also a common benefit. Once it is completed, the other players can use it to uh, fulfill requirements of their projects. And when we take a look at the other side of the Cargo U-Boats, the approved side, it requires for approval three resource cubes and the fuselage technology. So. Uh, it is not a very difficult project to achieve, so Yellow will allocate two more resource cubes, but the scientists, since it's not needed there, will be allocated to the V1 flying bomb as well as the remaining resource cube. So now it's Purple's turn to allocate three resources and a scientist. Note that Purple has the uh, Neuschwabenland mission it requires two resource cubes for approval. But let's take a look at the back side because this is a peculiar project. It is a mission project with two levels. And the first level is pretty easy to achieve, just two resource cubes and the completion by any player of a U-boat project. Remember, U-boat projects are those that can be shared among uh, all players as common benefits. So purple will place a resource cube in order to get the project approved and the remaining two resource cubes and the scientists go to the more ambitious Haunebu flying saucer project. And we have already close to the board the common benefit chips, the Soviet advance markers, allied advance marker, German control marker, and these are the weapons cubes. Each time a weapon is produced, we place that cube on the corresponding project or technology that produces that weapon. Finally, to complete setup, we take the uh, event cards and we've already segregated those that have years on them when they enter. We keep those aside. And for example, if we reach that year, for example, 1942, we would add this card to the event deck. So all the cards we have here are cards that begin the game in 1938. They don't have any year symbol. So we shuffle those cards and we're ready to go. The sequence of play in this game consists of six stages. Drafting event cards, funding, planning, 
actions, bombardments and advances, and clean up an order of play. The first stage is drafting event cards. In this stage, event cards specific to the current year are added to the event deck. A number of event cards is dealt equal to the number of players plus one. Players take turn, in turn order, selecting a card and passing the remaining cards to the next player in player order. Each player selects one card until all players have one card. Then the remaining card is revealed. If it is a mandatory event, it is resolved by the first player. If it has a bombardment box and the current game turn indicates bombardment, an additional bombardment will be performed by the first player during the bombardment and advances stage. The second stage is funding. In this stage, all players receive funding for their projects in the form of resource cubes and scientist cylinders. At the end of this step, players may convert resources into scientists and vice versa. Funding, when received, is always placed on a project card. Funding is received by a project depending on the project's current state. A project that appears in an event card never receives any funding. A proposed project, that is, one that has not yet been approved, does not receive any funding. An approved project does receive funding. A completed project with a plant on the map receives funding only if no weapon has yet been produced. But there's an exception. The V2 Rockets project always produces funding after approval because its plant is not removed after it produces a weapon. A finished project with no plant on the map does not receive any funding. However, mission projects do receive funding until their last development stage is completed since they do not use project plants. Take for example the Neusch Wabenland mission project, which receives funding until level 2 is completed. Here we see that Green has the V2 rockets project. Level 1 has been completed, earning 3 victory points, and a weapon has been produced by uh, that project, earning Green an additional victory point. And the V2 rockets project is the only project that, after it produces a weapon, its plant is not removed. And it has a plant as signified by that uh, numbered chip. And its uh, project plant is currently located here in Prague, which is a factory site. So because its project plant is not removed after production, Green receives two resource cubes as funding for the V2 Rockets project. Now Green also controls the Hanebu Flying Saucer project. Level 1 has been completed, three victory points for Green, and it has produced also a weapon. And the production of the weapon causes the removal of the research plant from the map. That's why it doesn't have uh, this large uh, disc there with a number. So because it does not have a research plant on the map, it does not receive any funding. Yellow controls the Neuschwabenland mission project. Mission projects do not use project plants. They continue to receive funding until their last development stage is completed. In this case, Yellow has completed level one of this mission project. Therefore, the Neuschwabenland project receives funding in the form of one resource cube. Yellow also controls the Vril Flying Saucer project. It has a project plant on the map as signified by this yellow disc with the number one. It has not reached its uh, stage of development. It has complied with certain requirements, but it has not uh, reached that stage. Thus, it has not produced a weapon yet, so it receives funding in the form of a resource cube. Purple has completed three projects, the Electroboot 
and the cargo U-boats project. Both are, of course, U-boat projects. They don't produce weapons, so no funding is received because they have already attained their uh, last development stage. The expedition to Tibet has also achieved its last development stage, so it does not receive any funding. Note that when a player has no scientist cylinder or less than three resource cubes, he is eligible for ad hoc funding until he reaches those levels. Note that uh, purple has three scientist cylinders, but they're being used to mark the level of completion of the project. So these do not count for these purposes of funding. He does not have any scientist cylinders, so he would receive one as ad hoc funding. And as to resource cubes, he has none on his project, so he would receive three that would have to be allocated to his current projects, even though, as this case shows, all projects have been completed, and these cubes will not have any effect on these projects. But note that during the game, resource cubes can be redeployed to other projects, but that is done during the cleanup phase. The next stage is the planning stage. In this stage, each player, in player order, places resources and scientists in spaces designated on the board to declare specific actions. And there are six actions in the game. Requisition, research slash recruit, move, event, production, and develop. Each player, in player order, declares whether he will perform the action or not. And if he does, he places the required number of resources or scientists on the action space. After all cubes and cylinders are placed for set action, then each player, in player order, declares whether he will perform the next action and places the required number of cubes and cylinders. After all cubes and cylinders have been placed for all actions, the planning stage is over and we proceed to the action stage where actions are resolved one at a time. Any time during the planning stage, players may negotiate the exchange of resources, scientists, technology cards, and event cards. Note, however, that players are not required to follow through on their promises. Resources, scientists, and technology cards can be exchanged only if the source and target projects are connected by a path of German-controlled areas. Event cards do not require such a path to be exchanged. Project cards can never be exchanged. A player can give a technology card whose weapon color matches the receiving project. Note that technology cards cannot be traded away on the same turn that they are received. When trading resources and scientists, the trading player moves his tokens from his project pools to his token reserve, while the receiving player moves an equal number of tokens from his token reserve to his project cards. The next stage is the action stage. Here, all players resolve actions one at a time in order of action type and in player order. Research actions are resolved from top to bottom of the technology track. Then recruit actions are resolved also from top to bottom. The purpose of the requisition action is to steal another player's projects, technology cards, resources, and scientists. To be able to perform a requisition action, a player must place one resource cube in the requisition space. As a requirement, the acting player designates one of his non-finished projects as the acting project and an opponent's non-finished project as the target project. The acting player rolls a die and modifies the result by the difference between the loyalty value of the leading researcher in the acting project and the loyalty value of the leading researcher of the target project. The die may also be modified by Himmler's favor difference. 
Also, certain events may modify this die roll. The modified result is consulted on the requisition table, and the possible results range from no effect to the acting player taking the target project and all its resources, scientists, and one of its technology cards. Let's take a look at a requisition example. In this example, Yellow will attempt a requisition of a project controlled by Orange. Yellow announces that the active project will be his Haunabu project, so we compare his researcher's loyalty, that of Richard Miethe III, with the loyalty of the researcher of the target project, Helmut Walther II. So in this case, uh, there's a plus one on the side of the active project, so we add a plus one to the requisition die roll. We check Himmler's favor track. Himmler is currently favoring the death ray type project, which is closer to the active project's type, which is the flying saucer type, than the target's project type, which is the U-boat project type. So we count the number of spaces between Himmler's favor type and the target's type. We have one box in between, so we add plus one to the requisition die roll based on Himmler's favor. So now we roll 1d6 on the requisition table. We add plus one because of the loyalty difference, plus another plus one because of Himmler's favor for a total modifier of plus two. The roll is a two modified to a four, so the target project has to surrender to a yellow one scientist cylinder. It does not have any scientist cylinder, so it cannot comply with this requirement, so we apply the next one uh, right above it. And it states that the target project loses one technology card. So yellow will take the color converter if two things happen. If it has the same color as yellow's project, and you see the light blue color there, so that is complied with. And if the uh, projects can trace a path between each other that is not blocked by an allied or Soviet advance, and uh, for that we have to check where they have their project plants on the map. The target project's plant is at U-Boat Base 2 in France, and it can trace a path which is unobstructed to Paris, from there to Wevelsburg, through Kiel, and to Penemunda, where the active project is located. So Orange has to give the color converter to Yellow, and Yellow can assign it to one of his projects, and of course, why not, to the Haunabu project. The purpose of the research action is for the player to take a project card or a technology card from the technology track. To perform a research action, the player must have placed during the planning stage a variable number of resources and scientists depending on the technology track position. If the player obtains a project card through this action, he places the card in front of him and collects the provides bonus stated in the card, that is resources or scientists, which are taken from his token reserve and placed on the project card. If the player obtains a technology card through his action, he assigns the card to one of his projects that has the same matching weapon color. After this action is resolved, the resources and scientists used as required tokens to plan the action are returned to the player who can assign them to any of his projects with no path needed to be traced. The purpose of the recruit action is to add resources and scientists to the player's projects. To perform a recruit action, the player must have placed during the planning stage a resource cube on the lower part of the corresponding position of the technology track. Only if the corresponding space in the technology track is empty, that means that there was no card there, or if a research action had been previously planned for this space. 
the player takes the number of resources and scientists stated on the space. In addition, the player may discard one of his technology cards and place it in front of the technology track in the space of the planned action. If he does this, he receives one more token of the kind already received. After the action is resolved, the resources and scientists used as required tokens to plan the action are returned to the player who can assign them to any of his projects with no path needed to be traced. Let's take a look at a research and recruit example. In this three-player research and recruit example, the order of play is green followed by purple and then orange. The technology track has the following cards, the beam transformer, in the second space from top to bottom, the orbital solar gun project and the space mirror technology card, the cascade accelerator, the Electroboot project, and in the bottom space, the long-range batteries technology card. Green has two projects, including the ambitious German nuclear plan. Purple also has two projects, including the no less ambitious death ray. And finally, Orange has two projects. One of them has been already approved. Green has the German nuclear plan, and to get it approved, Green needs accelerator technology. The Cascade Accelerator is in position number three, the third slot from top to bottom of the technology track, and it has accelerator technology. So for Green to be able to uh, research this technology, Green must play a scientist cylinder as a requirement to obtain this technology card. Green only has one scientist among all his projects, so he takes his scientist and places the cylinder on the top half of position three, which is the research space for that position. Next in player order is purple. Purple needs transformer technology to get his project approved, of course, with uh, an electric generator technology. And down the line, this death ray project will also need accelerator technology, actually improved accelerator technology is shown on its approved side, but for now it is not approved. So Purple is interested in obtaining the Beam Transformer technology card and the space, which is space number one, indicates that to take that card, to research that card, Purple would have to have two scientist cylinders used as requirements to obtain the card. Fortunately for Purple, he does have the two scientist cylinders, one with the V2 rockets project and the other one with the death ray project. So he takes them and places both on the research half of space number one of the technology track, assuring that Purple will receive the beam transformer technology card. Next in turn order is the orange player. He is interested in acquiring the Electra Boot project card, so he would have to place two research cubes as requirements to do so. So he takes one from the Expedition to Tibet project and the other from the V7 Flugelrad project and places them on the research half of Space 4 on the technology track. Now we start the second round of research and recruit and it is Green's turn, and Green will use one of its cubes on the moon base project to recruit two scientist cylinders. So we place the resource cube on the recruit portion of position or space number one of the technology track. And that can only be done if the topmost space has already been occupied by uh, tokens. Otherwise, players cannot place any tokens on the bottom space. 
Now the purple player also wants to recruit more tokens, so he takes a resource cube from his V2 project and places it in the recruit box for card number three, and that will allow the purple player to recruit three resource tokens. Now the orange player wants to plan a research action. He takes the cube that he has in the Expedition to Tibet project and places it in the research space for position or card space number five, and that will allow him to uh, research the long-range batteries technology. Now during the action stage, we resolve the research actions from top to bottom. Purple gets the beam transformer. Green gets the cascade accelerator. And orange receives the Electra Boot project and the long range batteries technology card. And now we resolve the recruit actions from top to bottom. Green receives two cylinders. and purple receives three cubes. So green receives the Cascade Accelerator project and he gets back his scientist that he used to obtain the project. He also made a recruitment action in which he used a resource cube, so he gets that back plus the two scientist cylinders that he recruited. And now it's time to place the tokens and assign the technology to his projects. And Green assigns all the tokens and the technology card to the German nuclear plant. Purple receives the beam transformer technology card that he researched and he gets back the two scientist cylinders that he used to perform or plan that action. He also receives the resource cube that he used to recruit three additional resource cubes and now he has to allocate the tokens to his projects as well as to assign the technology card to one of them. He assigns the technology card to the Death Ray project, two resource cubes to the V2 rockets project, and the remaining tokens to the Death Ray project. Finally, Orange was able to obtain the Electroboot project through research, and for that, he used two of his resource cubes and he also obtained the long-range batteries technology for which he used one other resource cube. And now he allocates the project, the technology, and his tokens to his existing projects. So Orange assigned two research cubes to the Electroboot project and one to the Expedition to Tibet project. The purpose of the move action is to move project plants, technologies, resources, and scientists on the map. When moving a project plant, the active player selects a new destination area while respecting stacking limits. Berlin and Wevelsberg can be crossed if controlled by Germany but cannot be selected as destinations. When moving technologies or tokens, the destination is a project plant. Technology cards can only be moved to projects that have a matching weapons color. Some technology cards require additional cost to move, as shown by the train symbol on the top left-hand corner of the card. If the card reads NA, the technology cannot be moved at all. After the move action is resolved, the resource cube used to plan this action, because it is a cost, is placed in the token reserve. Let's take a look at an example of a move action. In this example, it is turn 7, 1943. Green has the German nuclear plan approved, and it has a project plant located in Paris. And during the upcoming advance phase of this turn, if Green does not move the project plan from Paris, the Allies will advance into U-Boat Base 2 and also Paris. And if that would happen, Green would lose the plant 
and also the German nuclear plant project and any attached technologies. So it's a good idea for Green to move the project plant from Paris. And to do that, during the planning stage, Green has to take a resource cube from one of his projects to pay for the cost of the move action. He places the cube in the move action space on the board. And with that cost paid, Green can move all of his projects, technologies, and tokens during the move step of this turn. And Green moves the project through connected spaces to reach its new destination here in Linz. In this example, it is the last turn of the game, 1945, and Purple has three approved projects with project plants on the board. The Haunabu, the Vril, and the Electroboot projects. The Haunabu project is at Penemunda. The Vril project is located at Linz, and the Electroboot project, being a U-boat project, is located at Kiel. The Haunabu project is far from completion, but it possesses the color converter technology card. The back of this technology card is the magnet strom apparat, which has gravitational generator technology. And this technology is what the real project needs for completion. As you can see in the requirements, it has satisfied the scientist cylinder requirement. The control technology is satisfied by the central cockpit card. In this example, two other players have completed mission projects, and those are common benefits that can be claimed by other players, like Purple here, to complete this project. And it needs an improved version of the gravitational generator or two gravitational generator technologies, non improved. And you can see that Tesla's flying saucer event satisfies one gravitation technology and the color converter in its improved side would satisfy the other. So Purple wants to move the color converter technology to the project plant where the real project is located. We see that purple during the planning phase expended a cube to pay for the cost of the move action and the plant that is sending the technology, which is the Haunabu plant, has an unobstructed path through Prague and into Linz where the plant receiving the technology, the real project plant, is located. So we place the color converter technology with those of the Vril project and uh, Purple still needs to improve the color converter to the magnet strom apparat technology to obtain the last gravitational generator requirement in order to complete the Vril project. The purpose of the play event action is of course to play event cards. The resource cube used to plan this action is a cost. Some events are free actions, meaning that they do not require a resource cube to be played. Other events are mandatory, meaning that they must be played during this step. Any conditions in red print must be followed, otherwise the event cannot be played. If the acting player plays an event card with a bombardment symbol, the card is placed in front of the player and the player will have to resolve a bombardment during the bombardment and advance phase. In addition, such player must cooperate with all players and all players must cooperate with the player during the develop step. After the action is resolved, the cube used to plan the action is expended and placed in the player's token reserve. The purpose of the production action is for a completed project to produce a weapon. The resource cube used to plan this action is a cost. This action can only be performed by a completed project that allows the production of a weapon and that has a project plant at a factory site. In this case, the acting player takes a weapon cube 
and places it on the project's card, and one victory point is awarded to the player. In this case, the project is now finished and no further develop actions can be performed for it. The project plant is removed from the map after the bombardment and advances step, and the exception for this is the V2 rockets project, as we have explained before. After the action is resolved, the cube used to plan the action is expended and placed in the player's token reserve. In this example, Orange has the Haunabu project and it has complied with uh, a number of requirements uh, pertaining to the level 2 development stage that would give Orange 6 victory points, but not all requirements. And also Orange has the Schauberger's Repulsing project, which appears in an event card. Both projects have project plants on the map, and previously during the planning phase, Orange had placed a scientist cylinder on the space for the develop action as a requirement to perform this action. So Orange begins by spending both resource cubes on Schauberger's repulsing as the cost to complete the project. And both cubes are placed in Orange's token reserve and we take a scientist cylinder from Orange's token reserve and place it on the completion space, meaning that that project has been completed and the project reads that when completed, the event card can be assigned to an approved flying saucer project, which benefits from any one technology of the player's choice, either improved or not. So Orange will assign the completed project and the event card to the Haunabu project and it serves to comply with one requirement. Now, Orange will spend another of its resource cubes as a cost to improve the color converter to its improved side, which is the Magnetstromapparat. And the cube that was used as a cost goes to Orange's token reserve. Now we check to see if Orange has completed level two of the Haunabu project. We start by checking if Orange has two electric generator technologies or one improved version of that technology. And Tesla's flying saucer project provides the improved version. So that requirement is complied with. The next requirement, the improved version of the control system. And the cabin control system has that technology so that checks out too. Next, the non-improved version of the gyroscope and uh, Orange has uh, the improved version which also qualifies. Next, one scientist cylinder, Orange has one, and a uh, mission has to have been completed by any player. Orange has not completed a mission but Purple completed the expedition to Tibet mission. And missions are the kind of projects that are common benefits. Other players can claim them for their own projects. Next, the gravitational generator technology that is com complied with by the Magnetstromapparat, which has that technology. And finally, the improved version of the transformer technology. Notice that the Magnetstromapparat does not comply with that improved version, and that is where Schauberger's repulsing project comes into play when completed. It can be assigned to an approved project as we have done and it gives the player uh, the benefit of one technology of his choice so it will be the improved version of the transformer. So Orange has all the requirements for the second level. It pays the cost in tokens which is the scientist cylinder that goes to the token reserve and now to signify that the project has been completed we take a cylinder from the token reserve and place it on the completion space and Orange has scored six points. The purpose of the develop action is to change the status of projects and technologies. Projects can be changed from proposed to approved or from approved to completed. Note that some projects have more than one completion level and completing a project earns the owner a number of victory points 
as indicated by the corresponding level on the project's card. In addition, the develop action can be used to upgrade or downgrade a technology. Development actions can only take place when a project's plant is located at a research site. To perform the develop action, the project must have had first the required technology. And for this purpose, improved technology types also include the corresponding non-improved technology types. After the action is resolved, the scientist cylinder used to qualify for the action is assigned to any of the player's projects and no path needs to be traced. Every time a develop operation requires a particular project to be completed, the acting player may designate one of his own completed projects or any project in the common benefit box. Or he can ask a player if he grants him access to one of his completed projects. Players that have played an event card with the bombardment symbol in front of them must always cooperate, and every other player must cooperate with them. The bombardment step is resolved beginning in turn 3 onwards, and this simulates the effect of Allied bombing over Germany. The first player resolves one bombardment. Then all players, in order of play, resolve any additional bombardments as a result of an event card played during the turn. To resolve a bombardment, the designated player picks a target area among those which the enemy may reach during the current turn that has a project. The player rolls a die and modifies the result by the bunker value of the area and the current year modifier. This modified die result is then consulted on the bombardment table and the results here vary from no effect to the loss of two resources, the loss of one scientist, or the loss of a technology card. When a required effect cannot be applied in full for lack of cubes or cylinders, then that effect is ignored and the result above it is then applied. If a technology card is lost, any weapon cube on it is also lost and the technology card is removed from the game. Otherwise, the technology card can be placed on an empty space of the technology track or discard it to the bottom of the technology deck at the target player's choice. Now let's take a look at a bombardment example. In this example, the turn is 1944, the seventh turn, and Orange is the first player. So Orange will resolve one bombardment, and any bombardment as a result of any event card that Orange played that has the bombardment symbol, but in this case, Orange did not play any such card. However, the not drafted card was Allied Breakthrough, which does have a bombardment symbol, so Orange will resolve in total two bombardments. For the first bombardment, Orange will target Penemunda, where Purple has one project plant. The project plant for the V2 rockets project. The bunker value of the project site is 1, so 1 is subtracted from the die roll. Purple has already played this card before, the Rocket Ramps event card, which gives Purple a minus one die roll modifier in any bombardment against either the V1 or V2 project plants. This is the V2 project plants, so with this minus one plus the bunker value, the current die roll modifier is minus two. Finally, there's a plus two die roll modifier because the bombardment takes place in 1944, so the final die roll modifier is zero. We roll 1d6 on the bombardment table, and the roll is a two, no effect. So the first bombardment has no effect, and now orange rolls for the second bombardment against the same plant. This time the roll is a three, so two resource cubes are lost from that project. 
And we note that the project only has one resource cube, so that result is not implemented. So we move on to the next result above, which is the loss of one scientist cylinder. And the project does have a scientist cylinder, so it is lost and placed back in the token reserve. Now the next player to resolve any bombardments is Purple. And Purple had played the Rocket Ramps event during the event's play stage, and that card has a bombardment symbol, so Purple conducts one bombardment. And Purple will return Orange uh, the favor and will target Orange's project plant at Linz. And that is the Haunabu project plant, which currently has one technology card assigned to it, a scientist, and a resource cube. The bunker value of Linz is 1, so we have a minus 1 die roll modifier, and a plus 2 die roll modifier because the year is 1944 for a net plus 1, so we roll 1d6. A 4 modified to a 5, so orange loses one scientist cylinder which is returned to its token reserve. The advances step is resolved to simulate the effects of Allied and Soviet advances into German territory. No advances occur until turn 6, which is 1943. In that turn, U-Boat Base 2 and Paris are captured by the Allies. In 1944, Garda is conquered by the Allies, while Bratislava and Vienna are captured by the Soviets. In 1945, Wevelsberg and Nuremberg fall to the Allies, while Berlin, Breslau, and Belgrade are captured by the Soviets. In addition to these advances, players must first apply the effects of any mandatory events in place, such as, for instance, Allied breakthrough or Soviet breakthrough cards, and the effects of any events such as the German counteroffensive or German resistance cards. Every time an area is conquered by the Allies or the Soviets after an advance, any project plant currently in the area is removed from the map and the project together with any technologies attached to it is permanently lost. It is the end of 1944 and Bratislava and Vienna fall to the Soviet advance and in addition one of the players had played this card Soviet Breakthrough and this card has the effect of having an additional Soviet advance against a connected city, a city connected to a Soviet advance marker. So Orange decides to place the marker in Prague to avoid losing his plant at Linz. In addition, the Allies advance upon Garda. Now Orange, the first player, has to resolve the effect of this mandatory Allied breakthrough card. Orange has to designate a German-controlled area which is connected to an Allied control area, and that target area is immediately conquered by the Allies. So it has to be either Linz, which is connected to Garda, where the Allies have advanced into, or Wevelsberg, which is connected to Paris. Now, Orange, for tactical reasons that you will see, will designate Linz, which has his own Haunebu project plant there. So normally we would place the blue allied conquer chip on Linz and uh, Orange would lose that power plant, but now Orange has this card, which he immediately plays, the German counter offensive. And uh, Orange has to deduct one victory point from his total and spend one weapon point. And as a result of this, Orange places this black German control disc on the uh, site where the Allies were just advancing before removing the project plant, and it has the effect of removing the Allied advance disc. And in addition, the only way that that area, which has a German control marker, can be conquered is by playing the Allies 
or Soviet breakthrough events, which were played before Orange played the German counteroffensive event. So for all game purposes, the Haunibu project plant is now safe, not only for the end of this turn, but for the next turn, which is 1945. Cleanup is the last step in the sequence of play where players conduct the following three phases. First, the technology track is refilled. The last player takes the card, if any, in the bottom position of the track. If it's a project, he places it in front of him and takes the provides bonus. If it's a technology card, he assigns it to one of his projects whose weapon color matches the technology. If the player doesn't have a project that matches the technology card's color, the card has to be discarded to the bottom of the technology deck. Next is redeployments. Here, the players can freely deploy resource cubes, scientist cylinders, and technology cards among their projects, following the movement and stacking rules. And yes, a path must be traced between both giving and receiving projects. The last phase is to determine a new order of play and the procedure is different from that used at setup. Here the last player from 1 to 4 chooses one position, then the next player from bottom to top selects an empty position and so forth until each player has placed his order of play cube on a space on the right section of the order of play display. Then all cubes are moved to the left side. The game is over at the end of the bombardments and advance step of turn 8, which is the year 1945. However, the game may end before due to an automatic victory if a player completes the German nuclear plan, in this case that player wins, or a player completes the orbital solar gun, in which case he wins, or if a player has 14 or more victory points and the weapon's production goal was reached. If no automatic victory has occurred, and the game is over at the end of turn 8, players must check to see if the weapon's production goal was reached. The number of weapons collectively produced by all the players does not reach the weapon's production goal. All the players lose. But if the number of weapons produced by all the players reaches or exceeds this goal, then the player with the most victory points wins. In case of a tie, the player with the most weapon cubes wins. And if still tied, the player with the most completed projects wins. If at this time two or more players have an equal number of completed projects, the result is a tie. Let's take a look at an example of determining the winner. In this example, it is the last turn of the game, 1945. Only three weapons have been produced and eight victory points have been captured by the Allies and the Soviets. And Green is currently in the last position in victory points with two. Here we see the situation with the Green player. During the play events phase, the Green player played two event cards, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute which provided him with six resource cubes, which he assigned to the German nuclear plant. And Green also played the Allied Breakthrough event. With the cubes received by the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, now Green has enough cubes to upgrade the nuclear fission technology card. So he pays with five of those cubes which are the cost to improve said technology and the cubes are placed in the token reserve. And the card is flipped to its improved side that shows the moderated nuclear reactor which provides the reactor technology for the green player. Now we check to see if green can complete the German nuclear plan and win the game. 
He has the nuclear reactor technology as provided by the moderated nuclear reactor card. He needs to have the improved version of the accelerator technology and that's provided by the cascade generator card. He has to have four resource cubes and four scientist cylinders and he has both kinds of tokens and he has to have an approved project level one rocket project or level one flying saucer project and you see that none of these cards provide that but that is where the allied breakthrough card comes into play because green played the allied breakthrough card and the card has a bombardment symbol green can ask any other player to allow him green to use one of their projects which have been completed as a requirement to fulfill the german nuclear plan so green uses the level one v2 rockets project that was completed by the purple player in order to fulfill the last technology requirement so green pays the cost in scientist cylinders and resource cubes and green has won the game and we place a cylinder in the alto win space so green managed to obtain an automatic win before the end of the game therefore green wins the game now let's suppose that green was not so lucky and uh, did not draw the kaiser wilhelm institute so he was not able to complete the german nuclear plan before the game was over in that case during the victory determination step we would see that orange even though with 14 victory points does not win the game all players lose because the minimum weapon requirement of eight weapons was not produced continuing with our example let's suppose we were playing with the option that i will mention now and yellow played this card at the end of the game yellow was the turncoat so if the weapons production goal was not fulfilled and in this case it wasn't and eight victory points or more were lost to bombardments and advances and in this example eight victory points were lost to advances the yellow player who's the turncoat wins the game if however all players had produced collectively eight weapons orange would have won the game also includes solitaire rules and several variant rules that we won't cover in this video secret weapons of the third reich uses a clever worker placement mechanic to depict a situation seldom found in board game. A desperate race against time to save Germany from total defeat in World War II through the production of wonder weapons. This ever increasing emergency requires players to cooperate with one another, but only to a certain extent. As players produce enough weapons to prevent the game from ending in total defeat for all, it is then every man for himself. Can you save Germany from total defeat? Will you embark in the development and production of such powerful and ambitious weapons as the atomic bomb or the orbital solar gun? Or will you settle for projects with a more realistic chance of being developed? I hope this video has given you an idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.